Hello everyone, George Arteiro from the Cloud Native at Fogas team at Microsoft. We're going to talk about today about Azure Kubernetes Service Automated Deployments, Streamlining Kubernetes Deployments. Let's start first discussing how we deploy to Kubernetes. If you are a developer and you have Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and you write your code and you push to your Git repository, the way that we deploy is we create like a CI CD to use GitHub Actions. You can use Azure DevOps if you want as well. And we push to the Azure Container Registry, it's like a repository for your for the template for your container image. And from that container image, we deploy on Azure Kubernetes service. You're going to now to see exactly how you're going to do each one of those steps and how Azure Kubernetes service new feature called automated deployments can help you to do that. So it's demo time, let's do it. The first thing, let's have a look on the source code. On my GitHub, George Artero, I create an application called Blazor Intelligent App. How I create this app? I'm going to show you quickly. If you have Visual Studio and you create a Blazor Web App, just create the standard Blazor Web App .NET 8. It's the first step to learn how to deploy a container on Kubernetes. Then, you right click on the project and you add um, container Docker support. You can even choose um, the version that you want. I'm going to stick with the default, but there are very lightweight versions that you can just create and you do OK. Then they create a Docker file for you. They create this new file called Docker file that define your container step by step how you create your container. Run as a container, use Docker desktop to create a new container, Blazor app one. That's my application running as a container and the browser is going to pop up. I'm going to maximize my screen, then you can follow better. So there you go, we have a standard .NET Blazor application running, you can close, and that's how you enable containers. What I'm going to do, I have a, my application, then that's how I create mine. But I did some modifications. If you look at my code, I'm going to open this code here. I also included new components. I create a new page. And what I want to do, I want to include that AI, OpenAI chat on my application. Then I create a new AI component where I'm going to call a new service that I create called chat service. That's going to use this new you get package for AI and OpenAI. You can see on the dependence on my on my project dependence, I have those packages installed as well. And with this, I can just get some environment variables. You can also use the secrets that are comments on the readme file. If you go on readme file, I give you instructions how you can you can do that. In development, you can just use secrets, and you have to create secrets of Kubernetes to make sure that you have the, the key to access the OpenAI. And that's how I, I'm including OpenAI, simple OpenAI library. I'm using this GBT 4.0 model, and you can have some instructions if you want to send more information to complete chat. That's the only alteration I, I created. The Docker file is the same that I just showed you. And how I create this service and deployments. That's how we're going to see that Azure Kubernetes service itself can help you to deploy your application. Then what I have here, I have a Azure Kubernetes service automatic that's fully managed by us, created a cluster, a guest cluster. I also have the my Azure OpenAI service with a deployment called GPT-40. On my repository, what I can do, I can I can point my application here, a new feature called, I have a new feature on, on Azure Kubernetes service called automated deployments. And as you can see, this, I create a pipeline from here that it, I'm going to show how you can do it yourself. There are two ways. One, you can create the full, you can create the Docker file, the manifest to deploy on Kubernetes e, and the CI CD pipeline from here. And the second option is just the deployment. If you have done the Docker file and the manifest like I did it, we can just create a deploy application. Let's create to that one first. Then let's say app deploy. 
I'm going to select my repository, then it'll be the Blazor. If that's the first time you have to connect with your GitHub, but I'm selecting my repository or my GitHub account, and I'm going to say where my Docker file is. Remember, I'm just creating the pipeline. I have to go to my repository. I have to create the Docker file from Visual Studio. It's more updated, it's .NET 8 compatible. I'm selecting from that. I'm then selecting my Azure Container History. I have a Azure Container History here. That's my Azure Container History. Um, I have some repositories being created, ready, and I'm going to use this one. Then to select this Azure Container History instance, and I'm going to use the same image that I'm using, the Blazor Intelligent App one. Then I have to select, I can use Helm Shots or Kubernetes, but I have to create Kubernetes manifest files. And I'm going to select all my repository where they are. They're inside this folder called manifest. I'm going to select both the deployment and the service. That's the load balancer. And now I select, I have already one um, namespace. If you don't have it, you can just create new one. And there you go. You have all the files and you can just deploy. When you click deploy, the portal is going to create that connection with GitHub, federated permission to GitHub actions to access uh, your Azure Container History and also your Azure Kubernetes service to deploy the application. And they're going to create a pull request on your repository for you to approve. That's going to include this pipeline. Once that's done, they're going to have the link here for the uh, pull request. There you go, you can click here and you have to approve this pull request. And that pull request has one file only because you only need deployment. And they create the pipeline for us. Look at that. There's one, two jobs. One to build the image, build the Docker image. They're using um, Azure Container History tasks, they call ACR build to build your image. And the second step is, term, uh, step is a deployment where they're going to use that container, container image to deploy your application, all the connection, context, and they're going to use your GitHub hash as a container image tag. It's like the version of the container of the application that they're going to be using that. And that's how it works. If I approve this um, change request here, they're going to create a new pipeline, but I have done that before. And that's what happened when you do it. The show is uh, open, but once you mesh, you'll be showing like that. And once the deployment is complete, you can see that succeeded. How I can check that? If you go here, I can see my GitHub Actions, and I can see the last run of this pipeline. The first step is build. They build the image, and you can see on the pipeline, you can see all the logs of the Docker image, the build on that happens inside the Azure Container History, not inside the, the GitHub Actions. And once that's done, they push the image here, Blazor inside your repository, that's your image tag. You can even use the new stream artifact to improve performance if you want, it's like a caching. And once that step's done, there's a second step of deployment, where they're going to deploy after your application, all the connections done by the federation that we, we have done for you, and then application is deployed. You can check the application run here, Kubernetes manifest, even here you can click. The nice thing is for the portal, you can always see the last run. If you click, you can see the last run. That's exactly what we just did. It. And you can also click and see the application. For this application specifically, what we created, I deploy using two manifest files, that was created also by the Azure portal, one for deployment, another for service. The deployment, you just create the application and that's going to be updated. The image uh, tag will be updated hours when you deploy. And I'm mounting the secrets for the API key. You can see on the instruction that you have to create the secrets. I'm creating the secret manually, running something like this, those commands. And the difference I have done here, I have included because AKS automatic, they come with um, load balancer. Okay? If you go in, in service, AKS automatic comes with NGINX ingress controller. 
then you have to do a configuration when you have an ingress controller to be able to pump, to point your application for this one. And I have an application running here already. And I've, I even did better because I created a domain and I, I set my DNS uh, files to for this domain, okay? And what I did was I created two records. One is the service created by the portal. Um, and I create an ingress configuration. That's the way that AKS automatically already come with this ingress class. And the only thing you have to do is if you want to use a host, you can add this one. Otherwise, you don't need this line. And I'm setting this domain as an ingress controller. What means is you're going to be able to run your application on the domain. And the nice thing is I have now the AI chat. Let's ask something for AI. What's intelligent apps? Voila. We have now a fully AI application working on Kubernetes using self-signed certificates. You can figure out certificate later if you want, but that's how it's done. Please follow the AKS Community YouTube channel. That's a new channel where we're publishing a lot of content there, and I hope you follow us and hit the notification bell. And also, if you want more content on AKS, those are the links. See you next time. Thank you.